So could you simplify this algebraic expression? Well, if you're not sure, it's actually easier than you think. So what we're looking at here is the square root of x to the fifth. So what is the answer? Well, if you think you know how to do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And of course, I'm gonna fully explain this in just one second. But before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so once again, we're trying to simplify the square root of x to the fifth. And if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you absolutely need to understand how to do this. But the great news is that this is pretty easy. Okay, so let's see exactly how to solve this right now. All right, so we wanna find the square root of uh, x to the fifth. Obviously, a calculator is not gonna be able to help us out. Now, I, I kinda of, um, gonna turn around and, and actually tell you, well, there are pretty sophisticated uh, calculators where you could plug in some things, but again, most scientific uh, calculators are not going to give you the full answer to something like this. But if you have one of those souped up, uh, you know, college level, you know, if you're like an engineer and whatnot, even if you're uh, an advanced high school student, you might be using something that could, um, using a type of calculator, where in fact, if you know how to use it correctly, you could actually find the answer to this. But that defeats the purpose because we want to understand the concepts. And to under understand the concepts, let's take a look at an example of working with numbers. Okay, so let's suppose we want to find the square root of eight. Now, of course, we can go into our calculator and get a decimal estimate, but that's not what we want to do. What we want to do here is explore the properties of square roots and radicals. And this is really going to be the key in order to figure out this uh, problem, the square root of x to the fifth. All right, so here is what we need to understand. When we have a, a square root of a number or an algebraic expression, we can um, look at this problem as the factors of this number or expression. So let's just stick with this uh, simple example here. So the square root of eight, I can think of factors of eight. Now, what are factors of eight? Well, it's just any two or uh, more numbers such that when you multiply them together, uh, you're going to get back to eight. That's factors, right? So one times eight is of course eight, and so is four times two. So four and two would be factors of eight, one and eight are factors of eight, but I'm gonna select the factors four and two. And we'll think of this problem here, uh, the square root of eight as the square root of four times two. Now, why is this advantageous? Well, I'm gonna show you why right now. So here, I'm going to think of the problem as the square root of the factors of the number, but what you can do, there is a property, which is basically a law in algebra that states that we can kind of pull apart uh, the square root of, a, of factors of a number, we can write these um, uh, square roots right here as individual square roots. Okay, so instead of the square root, one big square root, square root over four times two, these are factors of eight. I can write this as the square root of four times the square root of two. Okay, so the square root of four times two is equivalent to the square root of four times the square root of two. And this is really the secret to doing this problem. You have to understand this property. Now, why is this helpful? Well, you can see right here, now I have the square root of four times the square root of two. I have this individual square root. And of course, hopefully most of you out there are like, oh, I can take the square root of four. That is two and you would be correct. So two, this, right, this square root of four, we want to simplify that as two. This is something called a perfect square. Uh, perfect squares are numbers such that we can find the square root of these numbers pretty easily without the uh, aid of a calculator. So like this, for example, the square root of four is two, square root of nine is three, square root of 16 is four, square root of 25, five, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so the square root of four is two, and we're gonna multiply this times this uh, square root of two. So the square root of eight is uh, uh, equal to two times the square root of two. and in mathematics, uh, if you're like, again, in some sort of algebra course, if you have this as your uh, problem, let's say on a test or exam, uh, your teacher is going to be looking for this answer.
Okay, it's not like an optional thing as well. You might be saying, well, I'll just leave my answer like this. Well, if you do, your work is incomplete. So this is the complete way to write this answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look um, at this problem now, the square root of x to the fifth. And we want to keep in mind uh, this concept of writing this value, okay, or algebraic expression in terms of its factors. Now, hopefully, you understand a bit or uh, a thing or two about powers and exponents, but if you don't, I think this um, these two examples will be intuitive enough so you can get the main idea. All right, so the square root of x to the fifth is equal to, now there's a couple different ways we could think of the factors of x to the fifth. We can think of uh, the factors of x to the fifth as this way, okay, x cubed times x squared. And by the way, you can actually write x to the fifth uh, this way, x to the first times 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 x to the first. Now, those, you know, we don't have to really write x to the, uh, the square root of x to the fifth this way. That's not really, you know, smart, and that's not really um, actually helpful for us. So we want to think about different ways we can... Uh, break up x to the fifth and uh, factors, okay, in terms of factors of x to the fifth. And of course, there's different different uh, ways we can factor x to the fifth. So we want to be smart about this. So x to the fifth is equal to x cubed times x squared. Now, remember, when you are multiplying powers with the same base, these uh, bottom numbers or uh, variables being the same, what we're going to do is simply add the exponents. Okay, so x cubed times x squared is equal to x to the 3 plus 2, which, of course, is x to the 5th. Okay, now this is uh, one way we could break up x to the 5th. And somebody might be saying, well, this is good because this right here, this x squared, we can take the square root of x squared, and the square root of x squared is what? Well, that is x. So if you're thinking in those terms, that's outstanding. But there's another way we can write uh, the square root of x to the fifth, and that's this way. Okay, we can write this as the square root of x to the fourth times x to the first, because again, uh, uh, x to the fourth times x to the first is the same thing as x to the fourth plus one, which is x to the fifth. All right, so this, you know, these are two ways you can think of. There's other ways we could think of x to the fifth, but these are two options here. Which one do you think we should use in terms of simplifying? Okay, or does it make a difference? Well, it does make a difference. And again, there's other ways we could actually think of this. We can actually think of this as x uh, times x squared times x squared. And x would be x to the first, right? Because uh, we're going to multiply all these together. Um, x to the first times x squared times x squared. We're going to get x to the fifth. Again, we're going to be adding exponents here. So different ways we can approach it, but I'm going to uh, stick with these two examples. So why don't you select one of these, or maybe even this one right here, but let's see if you can actually take the next step and simplify the square root of x to the fifth. So let's go. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style, and if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. And the way we want to do this is we want to um, uh, look for the biggest perfect square. Okay. So basically, that's going to be the biggest even uh, power of a factor. Okay. And, and that even really kind of makes sense. <laughs> it's kind of, let me kind of explain this in a better way. So here we have X to the fifth, right? So I could write this as X squared times X cubed. Okay. But what I want to do is write a break up this uh, power or this expression in terms of the biggest even uh, number I can find. So in other words, I have X squared times X cubed, or I have X to the fourth times X to the first. So x to the fourth, this right here, its power, its exponent 
now is even okay I want to find the law I want to use the largest even exponent here I have an even exponent x squared uh, but it's not the largest okay so in other words x to the fourth is a larger x even exponent versus x squared now both uh, ways will get you to the right answer but you want to get accustomed to using the largest uh, even exponent uh, in terms of your factors when you're breaking up uh, an expression like this and I'll show you why in just one second but let's go ahead and finish this problem up so we have the square root of x to the fifth is equal to the square root of x to the fourth times x to the first we already talked about that and now we can kind of break up uh, uh, this one big square root the square root of x to the fourth times x to the fir first into two individual square roots again this is the key to doing this problem and now we have the square root of x to the fourth now hopefully uh, most of you out there can see that that is going to be equal to x squared okay now that's the answer the square root of x to the fourth is uh, x squared that's the answer to this part of the problem but again we have to multiply it by the square root of x so this is the final answer okay let's talk about this right here the square root of x to the fourth because some of you may not um, see how to take the square root of x to the fourth easily so let's go ahead and just kind of review this all right so again we want to look for uh, uh, the factors with the largest even exponent that's just the uh, kind of a best practice but the square root of x to the fourth we can think of it this way again uh, as equal to the square root of x squared times x squared because x squared times x squared of course is x to the fourth okay now this we're multiplying uh, the same thing times one another so let's just look at this as a kind of common sense if I have the square root of 9 and that's equal to the square root of 3 times 3 well we know that the square root of 9 is 3 so you can kind of see the patterns here 3 times 3 remember that uh, the definition of the square root is what number times itself gets back to this number okay and we're kind of answering that question right here x squared times x squared this times itself gets us back back to x to the fourth so obviously the square root of x to the fourth will be x squared but let's suppose we didn't uh, do this but we just knew this property that we could break up uh, the factors in this way we can be like okay we have x uh, the square root of x squared times the square root of x squared uh, the square root of x squared is x times the square root of x squared is x x times x is x squared so this is one kind of way you can look at this there's other ways as long as you understand that when you take the square root of an even uh, exponent here and again this is the square root not cube root okay uh, it's going to be you know the easiest path to do a problem like this but here is really what I think is the easiest way to interpret square roots and this is something you absolutely need to know and that's when you take the square root of a number or an algebraic expression like this a variable expression what you're doing is taking uh, this expression okay underneath the square root to the one-half power okay this is critical and this is actually a very easy way to interpret this problem so x to the fourth okay or the square root of x to the fourth is equal to the square root I'm sorry the square root of x to the fourth is equal to x to the fourth to the one half power now there is a property uh, in uh, powers and exponents that says if you have an outside exponent okay, if we have a power and we're taking it to an outside exponent all we're going to do is take that outside exponent and multiply it by the x, uh, inside exponent so a to the m uh, to the nth power is a to the m times n and let me go ahead and show you another example of this if i have two cubed to the fifth power okay this is going to be equal to 2 to the 15th we're just going to take this outside exponent and multiply it by the inside exponent but here we are dealing with a square root okay which is going to be equivalent to uh taking this uh, whatever is underneath the square root to the one half power so x to the fourth um, uh, to the one half power so this is going to be one half times four or four times one times one half of course is four uh, over two or two okay and this is why you want to have the largest exponent it just makes for the simplest most direct uh, path to do this so x to the fourth to the one half power is uh, x to the second power all right so hopefully this makes sense to you but if you need more work um, with uh, you know dealing with radicals and square roots and this is absolutely critical stuff to know let me give you a few suggestions um, follow-on suggestions for those of you that still have questions about this 
or have the need to practice this. And you definitely have the need to practice this if you, you know, are kind of like eh, still wondering whether you uh, truly understand what I'm talking about. First of all, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that are about square roots and radicals and whatnot, but you really kind of want to um, formally learn this. Check out my Algebra 1 course. You'll find a link to it in the description. Uh, of this video, but this is something you have to get down because uh, dealing with square roots and radical expressions is a huge part of learning algebra. Okay, so hopefully this little video helped you out, and if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.